At first glance, caves might not look like the best place to look for wildlife. Barely any plants around, just a hole in the ground surrounded by nothing but rock. But believe it or not, these unique shale and limestone formations found throughout certain regions of the southeastern and midwestern United States are home to a wide array of endemic animals, including one of the creepiest and most ancient spiders in the world. I'm Mikey Green, and today we're exploring a cave in its surrounding limestone walls in search of this strange spider. But arachnids are far from the only animals calling this unique habitat their home. And it wasn't long before I spotted something incredible crawling up one of the rocky slopes around this cave, a cave salamander. While you might associate these creatures with living in creeks and ponds, this species lays their eggs in the water that forms due to seeps through the limestone walls of caves and spends most of its life in the twilight areas of these caves. However, occasionally they will leave the comfort of their caves in search for prey like small insects and spiders. So let's learn all about this amazing amphibian. This beautiful creature right here is the cave salamander, also known as the spotted tail salamander, because they have these spots on all the way down their body that extend all the way down to their tail. Now, this species is called the cave salamander because they can only be found in areas where there are caves, and because of that, also areas where there is moist limestone. Now, these are salamanders, so I'm not gonna handle it for too long. I'm gonna put it right back where I found it. Because salamanders, even though they might just look like some average lizard, are actually amphibians. So their skin is very, very sensitive. Any slight changes in things like pH, water quality, any oils or toxins I might have on my hand could damage this salamander. So I'm done handling it for now. Let's continue this presentation with it on this rock wall behind me. This salamander here is a pretty rare species to find because of how specific their habitat is. Like I said, you can only find them in places where there is this moist limestone. This means that they can only be found maybe a few hundred meters away from a cave. And right now, we happen to be maybe 10 meters from the entrance of a cave. This species, like basically all salamanders, have aquatic larvae, and their aquatic larvae live in the water that forms at the bottom of these caves. However, the adults will crawl up the walls of this cave and a lot of them will leave the cave and hide underneath the rocks and also crawl up the rock walls on the slopes around the cave, like this one right here. This species is pretty distinctive in terms of its appearance, with a very long tail, an overall orangish or yellowish or golden body color, with these tiny little black spots that run all along the whole body, the legs, the top of the body, even a little bit of the head, and especially that tail which is why these are also known as spot-tailed salamanders. These are a member of the genus Eurecia, which also includes some of the more common brook salamanders, like the southern two-lined salamander. But salamanders are extremely delicate animals, so that is why I am leaving it alone right here. But let's leave this cave salamander alone and keep finding some other really cool animals out here. All right, back to looking for creepy spiders. These lampshade spiders, while quite elusive themselves, should be actually quite easy to spot by way of their webs. They leave a distinctive circular pattern on any cave wall they choose to position their web that should be visible even from a considerable distance. Not far from the salamander, we stumble across the web of one of these unique and fascinating spiders. Right here on the side of this rock, just barely outside of a beautiful cave, is the exact target we were out here looking for. This is the lampshade spider one of the most unique species of spiders that you could find out here in Northern Georgia. And in fact, out in North America in general. So I'm going to try and catch this insanely creepy looking spider. Show it to you guys up close so we can learn all about the lampshade spider. Oh, well, that's not what I was trying to do right there, but here is this amazing lampshade spider. All right, children, this right here is the lampshade spider. This is one of the most, if not the most unique species here in the Eastern United States. They are a extremely primitive spider. In fact, they are probably our most primitive spider here in Northern Georgia. They are somewhat of a missing link between the mygalomorphs, which are the most primitive spiders, those like tarantulas and trapdoor spiders, and the more recently evolved spiders, the araniomorphs, which are things like orb weavers, jumping spiders, and wolf spiders. These have the trait of the araniomorphs that their fangs are intersecting, which means that they face each other when they bite down on their prey. Whereas on a mygalomorph, like a trapdoor spider or a tarantula, their fangs point directly downwards. But unlike most araniomorphs, 
These lampshade spiders have two pairs of book lungs, which is a trait that is shared by the mygalomorphs. And as you can see, the way that they walk around is also unlike any other spider I've ever handled. Instead of moving around super frantically and using all their legs at once, they kind of move one leg at a time, as you can see, and they walk super slowly and almost in an admittedly creepy way. I'm the kind of person to, that finds pretty much every spider cute, but this, I can understand why someone would get creeped out looking at this little guy. But it is still one of the most interesting species that you could find out here. Now this is called the lampshade spider because of the very unique shape of its web. They build a very, mostly cobwebby shaped web, kind of like what you'd expect out of a cellar spider or a widow spider. But unlike those other two, they build a perfectly circular hiding spot for themselves where they sit directly in the middle of it and rest during the daytime. This circular part of the web kind of sticks out a little bit and expands out, forming kind of a cone shape that's cut off at the back that looks like a lampshade. They'll sit in the middle of that lampshade shaped web waiting for their prey. These are araniomorphs, but they're part of a primitive lineage of araniomorphs called the haplogenae. That also has the southern house spider that I featured earlier on this channel. And as you can see if you watch that video, it moves in a very similar manner to the southern house spider. However, it is much more slender and much more habitat specific. These only live in these rocky slopes along the edges of caves because the rocky slopes that go upwards serve a perfect little hiding spot for them to make their little lampshade web underneath and hide in search for food that might be crawling up the walls of the caves or flying around the plants that grow along the edges of the caves. Like, unfortunately, all the stinging nettle that I've had to endure to make this catch. Besides their distinctive web, these are pretty easily identified by their body shape. They look like kind of a cellar spider on steroids with thicker legs than a cellar spider, but that very long abdomen or a pistosoma and that oval shaped head or prosoma. Their eyes are also very, very, very tiny, almost useless because these things live around caves. They don't really need to see very well. That's why their webs are super big and tangly. It serves the purpose of them being able to feel where insects and other potential prey items are flying or walking around without them having to see. This species also has very long pedipalps, and it almost looks like it's using its pedipalps to help them walk, which is very unusual for spiders. Usually on spiders, their pedipalps are pretty much completely a feeding tool. Sometimes they'll use them to clean their eyes, but usually they use them to guide food into their mouths. And I'd guess that is what this is used for too. But their pedipalps are so long, they're actually coming into contact with my skin and I can feel it. Almost feels like an extra pair of legs. Now there is no need to worry about this spider biting you or doing anything aggressive. They stay put in their lampshade shaped webs pretty much all the time. They live in these very isolated areas on the sides of rock walls close to caves and they are harmless to people. Unlike their distant cousins, which are also haplogenae, the brown recluse, these have a harmless venom to humans, like pretty much all other spiders, honestly. But as you can see, it's still admittedly pretty creepy. I could see why you might be scared of this, but there's no reason to. These are just doing their job eating insects in these areas. They have a pretty restricted range too. They could only be found in this kind of habitat. They could only be found in these regions of the southeastern United States. And it's best to just leave them be if you see one. If it happens to be around your house, if you happen to live in or around these kinds of areas, there is no need to be afraid of these. It's kind of just like a big cellar spider. So let's put this extremely unique spider right back where we found it. I hope you enjoyed learning about this spider just as much as I did. This was a lifer for me. I have never seen a lampshade spider before, so I'm gonna put this back, but I really enjoyed this. Hope you did too. Don't be scared of these little guys. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to check out this video right here, where we find another very strange spider species back home in South Florida, the octopus spider. Enjoy!